Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the PFF Betting Podcast. We are here. I'm your host, Kendall Valenzuela. Joined with me, as always, PFF Senior Data Scientist Ben Brown. I am super excited, Ben, for this podcast. We've got a jam-packed one today. We're going through combine prop bets because, of course, I mean, why not? There's something to bet on right now. So, And we're answering some mailbag questions that you guys sent in last week. So let's get into it. Hoops fans, the latest offer from DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, is too good to pass up. New customers can bet just $1 on any team and get $150 in free bets if they win. It's that simple. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you can still take your shot at a big payday. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Basketball Contest. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code PFF. Bet just $1 on any NBA team and get $150 in free bets if they win. That's promo code PFF at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21 plus minimum age and location requirements vary by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for full list of requirements and state specific responsible, responsible gambling resources. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. We're the only two, like we're we're some of the only few people from PFF not at the combine, having a little I, bit of FOMO. I, I don't mean, know about you. Yeah, I know. I felt, I felt, I probably felt like I had more FOMO uh, not going to the Super Bowl than the combine. Mm, Seems like true. similar, you know, it's a similar, similar people. So uh, I know I I converse with a few people that are not going. I didn't go to either, kind of like us. So it is what it is, right? I mean, I have a little bit of FOMO missing out on these events, but. We'll see what happens. I still need to get to Vegas when they have the Super Ooh. Bowl here in two years. If that doesn't happen, then I'm then I'm gonna throw my fit. I think at that time. Yeah. So just I'm just setting it up, waiting for that moment. I think is is my long term. If you play. don't make it to the Vegas trip, I don't know. You know what are we doing here? Right. What are we doing here? I mean, that's that was that, that is gonna be my own personal question. What am I doing here? So that you uh, yeah. you and Eric together for the Super Bowl in Las Vegas seems a little bit it's, dangerous. It's a match made in heaven. It's a match oh made in heaven. God. I would say heaven or hell. I don't know what when you believe it but yeah it'll be uh it'll be fun like nothing else i would say so that's awesome i gotta, I gotta get the call up for at least that one but i'm in so because everyone's in cincinnati and i'm in i'm in la right now right so it's like it's very nice because cincinnati and then you're back in you know somewhere where it's nice and warm and stuff but ben i have never and you live in minnesota so like you're kind of with me on this. I have never sat in traffic like I have in my life here. One time we were like, just a few nights ago, we were like, let's go to dinner. And I'm like, oh, okay. 45 minute drive. Right. It's right. not worth it. It is. I love, but I love the weather here, but I don't know when it's not like 15 minutes close in Cincinnati, we walk everywhere. It's, it's a it's lot. I, just yeah. like I, I feel so bad, but I'm like 45 minutes to get to <laughs> dinner. Right. No way. Right. It's it's really bad. That's one reason why I think LA is like my one of my least favorite uh, cities in the United States. I know I might catch some flack for that. But yeah, the fact that it takes like so long to get to the LAX airport at like four o'clock in the morning, no matter what no. time it is, you know, eight lanes, eight lanes, eight lanes on the freeway and they're all on stopped at like four in the morning. I just can't, I can't make sense of it. I can't do I it. Know. I love San Diego. San LA is nice. Different, different setup for me. So it's I'm, different. Yeah, I so. know. So I just had to tell you that I, I was going to, I was going to message you. I'm like, I'm sitting in traffic at, to go to dinner tweet, for tweet. 45 <laughs> tweet, right. me, tweet me, tweet me. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into this pod. Thank you guys for listening to my rant there, but let's get into this podcast. So we tweeted out, you tweeted out um, that we were going to have a little mailbag and we got a couple responses there. So thank you everyone um, that sent in questions. We're going to get to a couple of them, but the first one I want to start with is from Randy Mitch. And he sent this to me actually on Instagram, but his question was, best early long shot futures bets for next NFL season. So 
we haven't really had a podcast that has touched on this yet. We will in the future. That's a, you know, tease for the next few weeks, but what do you have something that you're kind of looking at? I know you in the futures market, you approach it a little differently than just saying like, Oh, here's a great Super Bowl bet. Here's a great MVP bet. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. I do think there are some teams that have value right now. Uh, I know okay. Eric Eager, Eager's touched on a couple of those already in various tweets and articles and those sorts of things. But I do think if you're looking at more of a long shot type setup, a la, you know, Cincinnati Bengals uh, mm-hmm. in this, in heading into this 2021 season, you definitely have to look for either that rookie quarterback that you think is going to make a pretty drastic leap in year or two, or you have to look for, you know, a team that is potentially going to land, you know, a top three type quarterback. And it just seems like, you know, the, the options that we once thought were probably going to move some less and less likely to actually move on any given day. So I don't mm-hmm. think there's a ton of value in the long shot market. I know uh, people have talked about the Jaguars. I do think that is probably the one that makes uh, some sense with Doug Peterson uh, as the head coach, obviously Trevor Lawrence to, to win the AFC South, win the AFC South. Okay. I think, you know, it's like, you know, Trevor Lawrence is obviously showing you know, generational quarterback type qualities, type mm-hmm. traits, those sorts of things. So I think he makes a pretty dramatic leap in year two. If they, you know, end up swapping out DJ Chark for maybe a slight upgrade at the wide receiver position, I think their offense could be uh, pretty dynamic with Travis Etienne in the fold. So mm-hmm. I know that's going to be a trendy one here already. Their numbers already moved a little bit, but I think it just makes a little bit too much sense to uh, at least not sprinkle a little bit on if you are hoping to get one of those future, you know, log shot opportunities. So I like the Jags all right with it i think there's got to be a, a team trendy in the NF- tw- a trendy pick yeah, in the I think, jaguars i know i think the, and i think you got to look for the nfc for value so i yeah. think you know every year basically back the pff falcons maybe they're you know no. another spot in a really bad <laughs> nfc south division but uh that maybe be might be the only other one i can think of outside of like hoping and praying that uh, Russell Wilson gets traded to like the Philadelphia Stop. Eagles or New York Giants or That's something. That's so rude. We'll get we'll oh. get to Russell. I know you're oh. just doing that to like poke me and make me a little poke bit upset, <laughs> but I do. The Jaguars are interesting, right? Because uh, as, as, just to win, we're not saying win the Super Bowl. We're not saying like Trevor Lawrence for MVP. Like we're not going to go that far. But the AFC South, right? Because like the Jaguars could have like a big. They have a big ceiling with where Trevor Lawrence is, right? And so like the prospects of this team can go really far. The AFC South is like one of the weaker divisions. You would agree with me on that one, right? Well, I, mean, I mean, I think it's, I think it's the second it is, though. It's I think be. it's this. Yeah. There's so there's actually price odds on division. That's going to win the Super Bowl. I think it's either the lowest or the second lowest is yeah. the AFC South. So, so uh, I mean, you got the bad. Tennessee, you got the Tennessee Titans, right. And they're relying on Derrick Henry, um, Ryan, you know, Ryan Tannehill, like there's question marks there. Right. So I think that this team like has a ceiling that Lawrence and depending on what you were just saying about like how they're going to draft and like what their cap space has, they do have that ability to be that sneaky good team at least to maybe sniff to win the AFC South and I do agree with you on that one I think that one isn't so much trendy but it is more realistic if you kind of like peel back the layers there it's really just if 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 they do things correctly which we haven't seen them do in the past so we do get the hesitant like why you're hesitant there right exactly so I'm looking this up now so it is the NFC South uh, as the okay. the highest odds to win the Super Bowl to have to have the winner of the Super Bowl uh, come from that particular division, then it's the AFC okay. South. So uh, I think those two. I think that's clear that those two are by far the worst divisions in the NFL heading in 2022. So maybe that's the spot where you look for uh, quite a bit of value. I would say at least in betting the division odds because anything can happen with nobody you know being all that good from either one of those divisions. So I like hate- taking my log shots there. Do you hate the question of who's going to be the next bang like Bengals team? I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just not, is it a, yeah, it's just like not, it just doesn't happen every year. Right. I mean, that's yeah. the main thing. It's like, everyone's chasing now uh, the quarterback that is going to change teams and, you know, the rookie quarterback that's going to make a drastic step. And, you know, those two things don't necessarily happen. Uh, year in and year out, right? Like Mm -hmm. they kind of have happened last year. And then to a lesser extent, the quarterback switching teams has happened the last two years, but still think really small sample size. A lot of things worked uh, incredibly well from the Bengals and the Rams uh, perspectives to get there. So uh, I'm not trying to, I guess, you know, capture lightning in a bottle twice or something like that. So I think there's just value on other options uh, and probably trying to fade some of that noise. So I know you like, and I know Eric also likes, you know, like the Baltimore Ravens to win I the do. AFC North. I think that one also makes a lot of perspective, not necessarily from a long shot bet, but uh, on just like a straight value bet. Cause I do think mm-hmm. that they're going to have uh, the pieces in place to win the AFC North. 
Well, and they're at plus 175. That was as we are recording this on whatever day, whatever day is all the days are together. Could Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. There's no football I day. I know that. So. <laughs> exactly. We know what day it is. And then that's Sunday during the NFL <laughs> season. But I do what plus 175. And I think the only thing that, um, you know, Eric had mentioned before was also you want to look at the Cleveland Browns there potentially. Right. He's he's saying, like, if you want to have something like with higher odds, you know, a bigger edge, they're plus 340. Right. But like the Ravens, we saw what happened happened to them last season or, you know, in the previous season and everything that went wrong for them. And so like for them to come back, you think that they have a better chance. I think he said like uh, the Browns haven't won the AFC North or division title since when? How long? 89 or something like that. I think so. So, but they've had, they've had three different division winners in the past three years. So I think if you're trying to put your money on something that is, could, could be attainable. If you think Lamar Jackson's going to come back, he's obviously going to have a better season than last year because last year was his worst season, I think. And right. s- since, you know, whenever. So I do think that I'm with Eric on that one where I did want to highlight plus 175 to win the AFC North. I think that's super doable for the Ravens. Right. I agree if, you're, if you're not buying into the Bengals going, like, I think the Bengals are going to have a little bit and I love the Bengals. We live, you know, I live in Cincinnati. I'm not I'm not trying to fade them whatsoever, but I do think there's a little bit of a Super Bowl lull there that we always see, like fatigue from making the Super Bowl the previous year. I just don't think that it's going to be they're not going to be hot and heavy as they were, you know, last year. Right. Definitely. And, and the way that they got to the Super Bowl may be a little bit unsustainable as well. So I think yes. it just buys, you know, plays it even more into the fact that they could uh, regress. And if the Ravens, you know, regress the opposite way, given, Mm -hmm. you know, that the injury situation was like something, you know, that we haven't seen in, you know, a decent amount of time specifically for the Ravens in 2021. So I like, I like that one quite a bit. I, I, I don't know if I, I don't want to steal Eric's thunder on that one, but I think that was, you know, one of both of our ideas were originated with that Ravens bet. I'll so. give you, I'll give you both partial credit, credit. When, when I Thank say, you. yeah, I'll be Thank like, you. it was Ben Thank and Eric. I did have, you. I don't remember the name. I'm so sorry if you're listening to this and this was, you were the person that sent this in. It was a couple of weeks ago, but like not to bring back, we don't want to say that a team's going to be the next Bengals team, but someone did want to get your opinion on the Pittsburgh Steelers. And what you maybe think, I know I'm throwing you a little bit of a curveball here, but like Pittsburgh, the defense was rock solid, right? I mean, you got TJ Watt um, tied the league sack record at 22 and a half, and they have other good players. I think the, the you know, they have notable holes, one of which in being a quarterback situation, but you can't get worse than what they had in Ben Roethlisberger last year. So what right. do you see? Well, I, I guess the question that they had sent in a couple weeks ago was what's the upside you see? And are you like laying anything on them? Or if, if you had any advice for them to like be betting them during the off season for anything. Yeah. And I know we talked about this last week. I do think this would probably be uh, if we had locked in one specific bet from last week's podcast, I do think it would be the Pittsburgh Steelers drafting a rookie quarterback. And they, That's right. at least as far as like a landing spot, for a team that would be, I think, in a really good spot if they drafted the right rookie quarterback, I mm-hmm. think it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like you said, I, I, I have a hard time, you know, seeing anybody that they're going to play at that position being like a downgrade from Ben Roethlisberger. Obviously, the roster around them was good enough to at least make the playoffs. So I think if they land a guy like Malik Willis, uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be really intrigued. Uh, what much more intrigued than I've been in, you know, and into buying into the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, in the past couple of seasons. So I think if they land a guy like Malik Willis or Sam Howell uh, as a rookie quarterback potential starter. Uh, I think, I think buying into them then is probably definitely going to be a spot that I'm getting interested in, I would say. So I'd like them to draft a rookie quarterback. I think Malik Willis was like plus 1000. That's probably how Mm -hmm. I'm playing the Steelers right now. But uh, if they do end up going that route, uh, I think that's a team that I think should probably get more trendy than what people are going to give them credit for here uh, after the NFL draft. There we go. I had to, I had to get you on that one. I'll, I'll use that as a quote graphic later for the social team too. I'll just say, I'll say the, the, the Steelers are the new Cincinnati Bengals. There we go. There That is, that'll (laughs) get the people going. Exactly. That'll get your mentions lit up. So another question and the last one we'll hit on before we get to the combine props uh, from our mailbag was from Josh Zachless. And he's, he's one of my friends and I know he sent this in. He wasn't joking though. That's the thing. He sent it in because he's a big, 
he he wants Russell Wilson, right? He wants Russell Wilson and he's an Eagles fan. Yeah, so two and two go together. So his question was being funny, but you know, we can, you, we can talk about this because you said you actually really did like this situation. He said, when Russell Wilson gets traded to the Eagles, should I use my winnings to get a Wilson Yankees Jersey or a Wilson's <laughs> Eagles Jersey? Again, funny question, but we have talked about like the quarterback landing spots and where are some places that you can put your money there. So what do you think? I mean, Russell Wilson, I don't think he's going anywhere, but right. you know, there's always other places that you think things could happen. Right. Exactly. I don't, I, you know, obviously the odds on favor to return in Seattle makes a ton of sense for him to do that. But if he's going to go anywhere, I think it's going to be Philadelphia. Uh, I think given the draft capital that they have young roster, they could potentially, you know, flip Jalen hurts in that particular deal. And I do think that Seattle would maybe look that, at that, not necessarily as, uh, a complete drop off or one for one trade, but it could be something where they could actually be excited about a guy like Jalen Hurts on a rookie deal taking up, you know, less than 1% of the salary cap uh, at the mm-hmm. quarterback position, given, you know, the paying out 17% or so to Russell Wilson. So from a team building perspective, I think it makes a lot of sense for him to land in Philadelphia. I think it helps both franchises get better uh, and potentially have, you know, the capabilities to get to the Super Bowl over, you know, the lifespan of where they'd actually be given those two contracts and what they're going to be at currently. So I like that one quite a bit. If I'm betting any quarterback change uh, this offseason, I do think Russell Wilson of the Philadelphia Eagles would be by far uh, the best option for both my betting perspective and, you know, the NFL outlook. So I'm rolling with it. Eagles jersey, lock it in. So. Stop. He's not, he's not, the thing is, he's not going anywhere. I know you two are just like trying to get, he's not going, like a trade for Russell Wilson. Sure, whatever. Sure. It would require a package of draft picks in return, you know, whatever you said, Jalen Hurts, whatever it comes down to. But like, it's known he is not. Go- he he uh, he's said before, like, I'm in Seattle for right now, right? Yeah. That's what he said today, even or yesterday. It's just it's it, we know that that is coming to an end. And it's not going to happen. But like, he's returning off that finger injury. Um, he was, he's gonna, he's gonna, he has a clean bill of health. He's going to be great in Seattle. It's, it's just, it's going to be a great year. It's, do you think Seattle, tell me about Seattle then. Do you think Seattle could win their division? No, no. Next year. I, that's no. why, that's why I think, that's why I think he should be traded. Right. Cause okay. I mean, uh, given the current state, given the fact they don't have a ton of draft picks, cause you know, uh, you, for a number of reasons, basically, I do think that it makes sense for them to potentially okay. do a little bit of a rebuild, especially if you can have a Jalen Hurts at quarterback, get him yeah. into, you know, believing that he is their guy, then uh, I think that makes less sense than the three years. They can definitely challenge for what should be uh, maybe a relatively weak NFC West division. Again, if, you know, the yeah. Rams finally, you know, have to kind of eat, you know, they've, they've extended the guys. They've done so many things to potentially win the Super Bowl in 2021 mm-hmm. that they're going to have, you know, a really far fall from grace here in a couple seasons. I do think that makes the NFC West pretty wide open as, as long as Trey Lance isn't like a legitimate top three type quarterback in that Mike, in that Kyle Shanahan type offense. So mm-hmm. uh, given that, I think, you know, the long-term play for the Seahawks makes a much, makes a lot okay. more sense to me Win it in three years uh, and be the, you know, the team that could potentially rattle off multiple division titles uh, given the NFC West state, I think makes a lot of sense from my perspective. So what is your take on this? Now we're just getting like derailed a little bit, but that's why I love it. Kyler Murray. What's, what's all, I mean, like we already talked about the drama and the stuff like that's gone on and now they're like, Oh, we love him. You know, he's obviously going to stick around, but like, where do you think that ends up? Like, do you think Austin said on tailgate the other day that he doesn't think a deal gets done before the season, right? but and that's, think- and that's ultimately what K1, like that's obviously what Kyler Murray wants and right. what, you know, what he's looking after for. Exactly. And I think he wants, and I don't think it makes a ton of sense from Arizona's perspective, unless you mm-hmm. think that they can maybe get him at a little bit of a discount before some of these other you know, you know, uh, you know, fifth year options and those sorts of things. And the extensions actually hit the other quarterbacks uh, in the, you know, similar age range as to what he's going to be at. So mm-hmm. maybe, you know, waiting isn't a bad option, but I think they still have questions about if he's actually a long-term solution at quarterback. So I think he's going to have to play this year without getting that extension. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's going to be unhappy, but I guess that'll just speak more to, you know, the Cardinals, being right and question whether he yeah. is long term. Did you see anything else? So. Brad has his contract projections. Brad Spielberg, mm-hmm. Spielberger, Spielberg. I was like Spielberg, Spielberger has his contract projections at six years, two hundred and seventy-five million. Yeah, I don't question Brad on any contract. No, no, he's he's one hundred percent right. So that's, that's, a, that's a lot of yeah, money. That's, that's a, a lot, lot of money. money. That's a lot of money. So. A lot of money. Yeah, I'm kind of with you guys. I'm the more I'm reading into it, I'm with you, and I'm with. 
Austin, like, I don't know how that gets done before the season. Right. I just, I don't know, but we'll be that we'll be interested in that. So that was our mailbag. We're going to keep doing that with you guys. I think that was a ton of fun to see like what you guys are questioning and everything like that, but let's get in to the meat of this podcast. It's we're, we're not at the combine, but that doesn't mean we still can't bet it. So we're right. going to go through our favorite combine bets. You have, you put so many of these things. There's so many bets yeah, we, that you can do. There's so <laughs> many, and I'm scrolling through, I'm scrolling through everything right now. So I want to, I want to get your top maybe two or three or what you're kind of looking at. I know Austin Gale um, from, PFF had sent in some things, tweeted some things that he liked too. And he's our, you know, college guru kind of thing. But what are a couple that you're looking for this week that you kind of like? Yeah. So position of the fastest player to run the 40 yard dash time. I think uh, okay. Calvin Austin, the third Memphis wide receiver mm-hmm. is definitely going to be the fastest run running player uh, at the combine. So you can get the wide receiver position at plus 175. Uh, cornerback yeah. is a, a decent favorite right now, minus 110 price on cornerback. But uh, I know people talked about Derek Stingley Jr. potentially uh, being an option. He's actually not participating in the combine. This number hasn't uh, adjusted to that specific information or news hitting the, you know, hitting over in the last 24 hours. So outside of him, it's kind of, you know, like Tariq Woolen, who Doug Kaya mm-hmm. did uh, a, a great article on talking about his top max speed at the senior bowl. He's a guy that can definitely fly, but at six foot three, 200 plus pounds, uh, I just don't think he's going to be able to uh, outshine a guy like Kelvin Austin, who's basically built for speed, built for the 40 yard dash track superstar, all these other things. So mm-hmm. plus 175 price. Uh, give me Kelvin Austin the third. Give me the wide receiver position. I like it. The fastest uh, forty yard dash time. I think it's. I think it's a lock. Definitely my favorite combine bet. Locking it in for you know the max amount, which isn't very much given uh, these markets, but uh, it, that's okay. So it, it still is enough to. A win's a win. Pro- right. What about right. what's another? What's another one that Austin said he liked? He liked. He liked NFL combine highest vertical jump. Over, over 43. 43 and I'm going with you. I'm over 43 and a half yeah. right there I like because that. he likes, he likes Trent McDuff or McDuffie, right? So he did it last year. Basically. I think Daxton Hills, the guy that's probably yeah, going to do it. He year. did, he did 43.6 inch. Uh, he did a 43.6 inch vertical jump coming out okay. of high school in 2018. Uh, I got the inside information from Dave Safaro, who is, oh. you know, who has the, the, the gold blue connections. And he said it is, uh, not necessarily a complete lock, but it's he's going to go over 43.5 uh, inches. So okay. at minus 130, I think at betonline.ag, it's minus 175 already. So lock that one in. I think that is definitely my second favorite combine player prop for sure. I like so. I like that one. I've also heard a lot about, uh, see, this is where we're going to get into it, but Daxton Hall, okay. I his name. I've heard really good, like, at, like, I don't Dexton know. Hill, I Dexton Hill, Hill, yeah, the Hill, safety Hill, from Michigan. You. Yeah, that's thank that's you, the one. Thank that's you. the one that Safaro said is a complete lock to go over for sure. Oh, he so did say that. that. Okay, yeah. I've I think maybe I heard that from Solf. He's probably just going around telling everyone. I had to about ask the him, yeah. <laughs> about yeah. the. I did hear though that like his like his pure raw athleticism is just going to be off the charts this week. So I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that one for sure for that highest vertical over 43 and a half. Yeah. Where are you finding these DraftKings? So there's no, so a uh, lot of these books basically no. are offshore is like the only spot that has like legitimate combine props right now for the most I part. Think, so both, I, I, think uh, Draft Kings, AG. I think DraftKings had a couple, they did maybe? have a couple, okay. they had a couple okay. but, um, uh, not, but not a lot, not as much as we need. Right. So, yeah. Do you have <laughs> any other, do you so have any Austin other also like? said that he really liked, uh, over 40 reps on the bench press. So I think Leo Chanel, okay. there's a video of him doing 40 reps already. Obviously there's some offensive and defensive linemen, uh, you know, Jordan Davis, who's like, mm-hmm. you know, a man among boys still, he could easily put up, you know, over 40 bench press options. Daniel Falali, a massive offensive tackle from Minnesota. He could easily do it as well. So I think over 40 bench press reps, we could see multiple guys do that. So I like the over on that one as well. And I do think I'm taking, okay. I'm think I'm, Taking the under on basically every speed type uh, option for that to actually be. So I don't think anybody's going to oh, okay. run like a, I don't think anyone's going to run like a 4.29 40 or anything like that. I don't think anybody's going to run. Uh, what is it like? Um, like a 10.71 six yard mm-hmm. shuttle. So I'm going slower on all of those. I do think it's probably the correct option. We're not going to see a lot of blazing speed outside of Kelvin Austin uh, at the combine from my perspective. So. I like it. I've been also reading, maybe it's from AG, maybe it's from Solf. Again, it's just those two just feeding us all these information. Right. And then there's, and then there's Eric that's down there. That'll just give us all the insider information. Right. Longest broad jump or broad jump will be higher. I think it's set at 
11, five, 11, 11 five, five, yeah. in, feet, five inches. I think I've read that that one people have been locking that in that one in to go like over, to go higher, to go longer than that one. Um, just because they're saying like past data has shown that they're moving m- more towards players excelling at that event. Right. So I kind of like that one to go more than 11 feet, five inches, whatever, to go higher than. I yeah, like that one a that's, lot too. That one that's basically gone over like the last like two or three yeah. years, I want to say. So I do agree with you. I do think like there's an emphasis on uh, players developing that skill set more so than what, the, than what there was in years past. Because it does seem to matter a decent amount from like mm-hmm. uh, an expectation of them actually being good in the NFL. So uh, I like that one to go over as well. I do think like, I do think for the most part, jumping over running uh, speed type things probably under or slower is definitely how I'm playing. Okay. So I like it. Well, there, there you go. That's all, that's all we needed to say. This whole podcast is going to just been running, (laughs) running under jumping over. Right. I like it. I like, what about Rich Eisen's? Are you doing, we got to talk about his 40 yard dash faster than I think it's six. So I know I'm like an out of touch millennial, but do I, is is he like, is there like some like thing happening? Yeah, that's I I saw it's like every year. Yeah, I saw like, yeah. yes, I guess I've like completely missed this. But yeah, I saw like odds what? right all the time. And I'm like, what is going on here with like, yeah, that's the thing. That's like at the like very, on? it's like at the very end, you know? Yeah, I've like, apparently I've not paid close enough attention to the combine. I think I was like, I can't, I could be totally wrong on this. And you guys can just let me know if I am. But I think it like started in, I don't know, someone, someone had, you know, challenged him to do it. And ever since he's just done it every year, gotcha. I believe that's what it is. Okay. I believe that's what it is. So I'm yeah, sure you kind of have I'm, to get I mean, into it. Sounds, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I, I guess I got to look at his historical stats here a little bit, and then I'm going to have to give a, give a better synopsis. So I looked at that and I was like, there's no way I'm accurately handicapping how fast Rich Eisen can run. And then I didn't even realize he'd ran it before. So I guess I gotta I gotta go back to leave the wall it, a little bit, go back to the drive board and figure leave it, it out. to so. leave it to Ben Brown to be like, I gotta look at the uh, like historical stats on that. He does it in a suit, so you kind of gotta give him benefit of a little suit, bit. suit and dress shoes. Right. So it's well, not, I mean, he just like comes down from the you know from the booth and just does it. Well, we could get a pretty decent clustering algorithm on his oh you know, height, weight, and age, and I think we could have a pretty accurate indication of how. I need you to perform, tweet so. at me when you have that cluster ready, and then we'll okay. tweet it as a graphic. Okay. I just, I kind of, I kind of need that to happen now. <laughs> I, I really do need that to happen. I love it. Any, any locks? Like, what out of all the ones that you've said, what is the combine prop that you are absolutely like? This is what I'm doing. Lock it in. The lock, lock of the week. week. Lock of the week. I'm going lock wide receiver, fastest okay. forty yard dash time. Kelvin Oz in the third i know you've done it for me before i need it one more time let's see it let's see a 4.300000 40 yard dash time that's what i'm asking and hoping and praying for thank you so i love it i'm going longest broad jump will be more than higher than 11 feet 11 that's it that's those are our two locks so everyone thank you for listening because that has given you your locks of the week for the combine i'm super excited even though we're not there it's okay We'll, right. we'll make it, we'll make we'll it survive. worth our while. I know we'll make it worth our while. Well, thank you everyone so much for listening. We'll be back. We'll let you know when we're going to do another mailbag soon, but probably next week hitting that futures market too, tapping into some of those other questions that have been sent in, but thank you everyone so much for listening. Have a great rest of your week and good luck.